I'm going to work an example of a constrained optimization problem. And for this problem, I want to find the extrema of f of x comma y is equal to x squared y plus 3y squared minus y on the region x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 10. So this is a disk in the xy plane, and it includes its boundary, which means that this is a closed and bounded region. Since this region is closed and bounded, and this function is continuous, our extreme value theorem applies, and we can expect to find global maxima and global minima on this region. Our approach to finding the extrema of this function on this region involves three steps. As a first step, we're going to find the local minima and maxima of the function that are within this disk. Second, find the local minima and maxima that lie on this boundary curve, x squared plus y squared equals 10. These are maxima and minima of the function as we move along the curve. So they, they will tell us the highest value and the lowest value that the function attains on this edge of the disk. As our final step, we'll compare the values that we find as local maxima and minima of the function within the disk with the values that we find of the local maxima and minima of the function as we move along the boundary curve to find the global maxima and minima of the function on the region. Okay, we start by finding the local extrema of the function. At critical points, the gradient of the function is equal to zero, meaning that each of the first order partial derivatives at that point can be set to zero. Computing f sub x, we have 2xy from the first term, plus zero from the second term, and zero from the third term. For f sub y, we have x squared from the first term, plus 6y from the second term, minus 1 from the third term. Setting each of these to zero at the same points, f sub x equals 2, xy equals 0, f sub y equals x squared plus 6y minus 1 equals 0. Note that I didn't simply set fx equal to fy. Although it's true that they're equal at the points we're interested in, we have more information than just their equality we know that each of them is individually equal to zero, and so if we set them equal to each other, we would lose some information. Since 2xy is equal to zero, we know that either x equals zero or y equals zero. This sets us up to make a chart to find solutions that satisfy each of the, both of these equations at once. If we're in the case x equals zero, then f sub x is two times zero times y, which is certainly zero. And f sub y is equal to 0 squared plus 6y minus 1, and that needs to be equal to 0. So y equals 1 sixth, and we have 0 comma 1 sixth as a um, critical point. If y equals 0, then f sub x is 2x times 0, which is 0. And f sub y equals x squared plus 0 minus 1, and that also needs to be set equal to 0. So x squared equals 1, which implies x equals plus or minus 1. So we have 1 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. And we've just found three critical points. We could classify these critical points by computing d equals f sub xx, f sub y y minus f sub xy squared at each point. And um, I'll do that for one point. To compute f sub x, x, only one term has x in it, so 2xy is the first partial, 2y is the second partial. For f sub y, y, this one's linear in y, and that one's linear in y. They'll both disappear, this is the only term we need to care about, so we get 6y for the first partial and 6 for the second partial. And for f sub x, y, there's only one term where they're mixed together, that's this one. And so the first partial with respect to x gave us 2xy, and if we take the partial with respect to y, we get 2x. Thinking about it in the other order, if we take the partial with respect to y first, we get x squared, and then if we take the partial of x squared with respect to x, we also get 2x. Now computing d, we have d is 12y minus 4x squared, 
This is particularly easy to compute when x is 0, and we can tell that if x is 0 and y is 1 sixth, this will certainly be positive. Um, since f sub y, y is always positive, when this is positive, we're going to have a local minimum. It's actually not too hard to plug our other points in either, because um, y is equal to 0 at that is those points, so only we only have the negative 4x squared term. Since x squared is always positive, this will certainly be negative, and both of those points are saddles. To be able to compare later on, uh, when we find the maximum and minima along the boundary, we do want to know what value of f is associated with this local minimum. So we have uh, f computed at the point 0, 1 sixth. So when we plug in 0 for x, x squared y is 0. Uh, and then we have 3 times 1 sixth squared minus 1 sixth. Factoring out a 1 sixth, this is 1 sixth times 3 over sixth minus 1, which is 1 sixth times negative 1 half. So we get negative 1 twelfth. We've finished finding any local maxima or minima of the function within the region, and so now we're ready to figure out what's happening along the boundary. Before uh, jumping in to the math of finding the extrema on these contour lines, I wanted to plot the contour plot, and so I went over to Wolfram Alpha and got some sense of what the contours look like of this function. And so from this, we can already sort of pick out by eye places where the directional derivative as we move along this constraint line will be zero. And so some likely spots are down here and up here. Mathematically, recall that instead of looking for where the directional derivative is zero, we look for places where a perpendicular off of this constraint curve is parallel to the direction of, of maximum increase of the function, because that's equivalent to places where the directional derivative will be zero. We're going to end up with a system of three equations, two from that parallel condition and one from the constraint. So now I'll compute these gradients. The gradient of f is 2xyi um, plus x squared plus 6y minus 1j. And the gradient of g is 2xi plus 2yj. Uh, this is coming from this x squared plus y squared. Setting uh, grad f equals lambda grad g, we have 2xyi plus x squared plus 6y minus 1j is equal to 2x lambda i plus 2y lambda j. The only way for these two vectors to be equal is if their components are equal. So we're able to write an equation coming from the i components and a second equation coming from the j components. So we have 2xy equals 2x lambda x squared plus 6y minus 1 equals 2y lambda, and finally x squared plus y squared equals 10. This is the system of three equations that we'll need to solve to find the extreme points, uh, the, the, the points where the function reaches its extreme values on the curve x squared plus y squared equals 10. Now it's time to think about how to simplify this system. So the first equation to focus on is definitely the first one because it looks pretty simple and it is 2xy equals 2x lambda. So this, um, we can certainly divide by 2 and we're left with xy equals x lambda. This equation is true either when x equals 0 or when y equals lambda. It's really easy to miss this x equals 0 solution because it's quite tempting to simply divide out by x, but it's important to recall that we can't just eliminate x. Um, if x is 0, we're in a special case. Let's pursue the x equals 0 thread first because it's relatively simple. If x equals 0, then 6y minus 1 is equal to 2y lambda, and y squared equals 10. 
So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 10. These are the local extrema that, were, that we were easily able to see by looking at a sketch of a contour plot. Now we pursue the other case where y equals lambda. So we have x squared plus 6y minus 1 equals 2y squared, and x squared plus y squared equals 10. We can eliminate x squared by uh, subtracting these equations and getting something just in terms of y. So I'll take the bottom and subtract the top. So x squared minus x squared, y squared minus 6y plus 1 equals 10 minus 2y squared. Bringing everything to one side, this implies that 3y squared minus 6y um, minus 9 equals 0. So y squared minus 2y minus 3 equals 0. This factors into y minus 3 times y plus 1 equals 0. So we have y equals 3 or uh, y equals negative 1. Recalling that x squared plus y squared equals 10, we're able to find some values of x. So creating a table for these two cases, when y equals 3, we have x squared plus 9 equals 10, so x equals plus or minus 1. And when y is negative 1, we have x squared plus 1 equals 10, so x is plus or minus 3. We're left with six critical points, and to find the global maxima and minima, we'll need to find the value of the function at each of these six critical points, compare them to each other, and to the local maximum that we found within the region, and then we'll find the largest or smallest amongst all of these. So we have f of 0 comma root 10, and this is equal to, since x is 0, only the later terms are coming in, this is 3 times 10 minus root 10, which is 30 minus root 10. And then we have f of 0 comma negative root 10, which is, um, again, 3 uh, times 10 from the y squared, but now plus root 10. So this is larger than the other. And then we have f of 1 comma 3. And this is 1 times 3 is 3, plus 3 times 3 squared is 27 minus 3. And then we have f of negative 1 comma 3, which is identical, um, so also just 27. And then we have f of negative 3 comma negative 1, and this is negative uh, 9 plus 3 plus 1, and then we have f of 3 comma negative 1, and this is the same as above, negative 9 plus 3 plus 1, which is negative 5. Now that we have all six of these values, we're looking through for ones that are max or mins. So 30 minus root 10 is clearly bigger than negative 5, and it's clearly smaller than 30 plus root 10, so it's not a candidate. Um, 30 plus root 10 is bigger than 27. It's bigger than negative 5. This is uh, our current global maximum. 27 is smaller than that, but also bigger than negative 5, so it's not a candidate. And then negative 5 appears to be our, um, our minimum around the boundary. So on the boundary, we had a maximum of 30 plus root 10, and we had a minimum of negative 5. This minimum is smaller than the local minimum that we found before, and so uh, the global minimum of the function is negative 5, and it's achieved at these two points, and the global maximum of the function is 30 plus root 10, and it's achieved at this point.